welcome to Code Rush Feature of the Week. So what have we got this week, Mark? Rory, I want to introduce you to templates inside of XAML. Shortcuts okay. like code snippets. Code Rush templates are like Visual Studio code snippets that you can use inside of XAML uh, to write code faster. And um, just to show you where the templates are, inside the Code Rush, uh, if you go into the options or if you just select this Code Templates menu item, it'll bring up the options page and bring you right there to the templates. And then um, for the language, you can select XAML. And you can see some of the templates that we ship with Code Rush. And um, they're broken into different categories. We've got a category called Elements, another one called Properties. We've got templates for working with bindings and another for creating styles and templates. Um, I want to show you the templates for creating controls first. And when you look at this at first, this may look a little bit bizarre. We've got something that says one WPF1 tag, WPF2 tags. Um, these may uh -huh. not make a lot of sense to you. However, if you go over to template name variables and also make sure that the language is XAML, you can see we've got a couple variable template name variable lists here. And among them are WPF1 tag controls. These are common WPF controls generally declared with a single tag. And then okay. another one, another list dedicated to common WPF controls generally declared with matching begin and end tags. The difference between these two is that um, the ones in these lists often have pieces inside of them generally that you're going to fill out. And that's especially yeah, I can see things like the stack panel there and the list box. These are clearly going to have items within them. Exactly. And so what this does is we're just kind of getting us some shortcuts here by deciding which one of these we're going to put on which of these two lists um, in terms of defaults for what code is ultimately generated. So here you can see that B is going to be a button and BD is going to be a border and CB is going to be a combo box. So yep. if we come out of here and we come down here, we just type in B and then the space bar. And there you can see it's selected the, the name. And so now I can just type in uh, the name of this, uh, whatever this is going to be, the name of the button and then hit enter. And now I'm inside here and I can type in uh, the text that I want here for it. And there you can see the button showing up there, right there at the yeah, top. Yeah, I see it reflected immediately. And that was very simple. That was just a few keystrokes. You didn't have to worry about all the angle brackets, all the quotes, all the dots. Uh, it was all pretty simple. Right. And then, and we saw, remember, we saw that CB was combo box. I can come down here and type in CB. And here's my combo box right here. Uh, and I can put that in there. And then inside here, I can put in, continue to fill out uh, my combo box items. Notice in both of these, Rory, it generated the X name right here and here sure, yeah. and allowed me to fill that out. Sometimes you don't need a name. Um, if you, that's the case, for example, I want a stack panel. So SP would be like a stack panel by itself. I'd get there and it would ask me to specify the name. But if I follow it by a comma, a lot of templates, if you follow it by a comma, will create a shorter version of that template. So an okay. SP comma is going to give me a stack panel without asking me what the name is going nice. to be, um, for example. And inside that stack panel, if I want to have a button without a name, I just put a comma after that B, and there it is right there. And cool. uh, so I can do that kind of thing. If I want a combo box without a name, I just put a comma after it, and there's my unnamed combo box. All right? So you can add your own entries into, um, into these named template variable lists. So if you have controls you want to add that you use frequently, just create an abbreviation here for them and specify what the value is going to be off to the side. For example, uh, I could put a uh, checkbox here like this and maybe put a CK as the uh, abbreviation for it, like that. And yep. then click OK. And now come down in here and I can type in a CK. And uh, there it's asking me for the name. It looks like I need a uppercase B there. Is that right? Yep. All right, let's fix that. But that's really good because if you're making your own controls or your own arrangement of controls, then you can very quickly put together a little library of things that you use quite often, perhaps in your custom domain project. And you can add these, these templates, these items in these lists to, for all your custom items as well. So you're not just restricted to those that come out of the box. Exactly. And uh, whoops, that was CB right there. Let's do CK and test it out. There's my checkbox right there. So there you I can go. see 
uh, checkbox uh, true or something along those lines. Whatever it's going to be. So it's literally seconds to set up, but will save you potentially quite a lot of time. Again, with the, with the typing of all that manually, you're talking angle brackets, colons, equals, lots of shifted keys, in fact, uh, all replaced by just a couple of keystrokes. Exactly. Now, another thing I want to talk about. So, so, so we've talked a little bit about creating controls very quickly. The other thing you can do is you can set properties very quickly, numeric properties. For example, I'll often set up a margin um, for a control. So let's do this. Let's take this. Let's put this inside the, uh, the stack panel right here. Let's maybe put two of these checkboxes inside that stack panel. Let's call it two. All right. <clears throat> okay, so let's go back up there. We'll take that stack panel and move it down in here. There's my stack panel. Now you can see these are very close together. Right they there, are, right? yeah. And if I want to move them further apart, I'll use the margin. But if I want to set the margin, I have to type that in. But if I have code rush, I can just use the letter M and then follow it with a number. For example, M3 would set up a margin of three all the way around it. That's nice. So I can just come right in here and type in M3 here as well. And there I've got a margin set up. Um, similarly, if I want to set the width, I can just type in width and then some number after it. Like, for example, uh, 20, like that. And it'll set the width at 20. Or, Very nice. Or W300, uh, like that, and it'll set the width to 300. That's really good. So it's that setting properties. I'll show you how that works. If we go into the to, uh, Code Rush templates again, and we look uh, this time inside properties, uh, you'll see that uh, we've got some numeric properties here uh, with support all the way up to one digit. And they look like this. Basically, they're looking at some number property followed by um, some set of values. And so all these num props right here, these are all coming from, um, as you might have guessed, numeric properties over here. So these are just basically anything that takes a number that's a property, like padding, margin, or height, I put in this list. And again, it's easy to just add your own, right? You put your I was going to say, we can just add our own items to that. So anything you want to keep track of, so maybe just a score or something like that, you could add score with an S, and immediately you can go S20, and you get score equals 20. Right. If score was a common property on all of them, it would just it would look just like that, where we would put, we would put whoops, not there, we'd put an S on one side and score over there. And now that we had that, we could now come in here and we could type in, uh, S1234, uh, 134 four like that, and there it would fill it out for you. Very so nice. So you can set that up pretty quickly and easily like that. The other thing I wanted to show you was grids. So let's go back up in here to the templates and talk about uh, creating grids over here. Well, actually, there's two things. One is um, uh, just creating grids by themselves. One of the cool things you can do in here is you can come in here and you can say, G, table columns, by table rows. And these are numbers that go here and here in these two locations. So G2X2, for example. Right, Rory. So I can just come in here and type in G2X2 for a two by two grid and uh, hit the space bar of the tab key. I'd say, wow, look at the amount of text that you, that you have to input in order to get a two by two grid. But compare that now with the tiny amount that you typed in and then just hit space. It was what, four or five characters at most? Right, so it's a big savings over here. And now on top of that, I can go specify what my values are here, right? I can come in here and say I want it to be a 200 by 200 grid, for example, change these, specify That's what right. I want to do here. All the well. relevant places have been pre-selected for you, so you don't even have to navigate to go find them. Exactly. And then now I can come in and just put in the contents of my grid. Now that I'm here, if I want to put uh, my grid in a particular location here, let's do this. Let's, uh, um, let's grab my grid and actually we'll move this over so it's like showing up and We'll, we'll let you see a little more of it as I work with it here. So there's my two by two grid. So one of the other things that I can do is I can, uh, let's say, let's, we'll create my new button inside of here. Uh, we'll say uh, button and we'll say just uh, BTN one like that. And I'll put the number one inside of that. And let's say I, I'm, I'm fine with that being right where it is. Let's create another button down here uh, and we'll call this BTN two. But this time I want to put it over in uh, column one. So here I can just type in C1 like that. And it see what it did, did there? Ah. It moves it over to that one. And so down here I can come down and we can say again uh, a button and we can call it BTN3. I just noticed up here I want to make this BTN. Just a little bit of fixing there. And then down here we'll make it a three. And down here we want to make this in uh, 
row one like that. So we're typing R1 just like that. See that? So yep. I, I kind of want to go back in slow motion so you can see what I did. I just type in R and the number of the row I wanted to be in. It's so instinctive. I mean, you're just talking basically the first letter, maybe two uh, of some things, and you just type that in, in this case with numerics, because that makes perfect sense as well. Hit space, in your case, your trigger key. Of course, we know that sometimes people may have that set up to be tab. But again, it's, it's a couple of characters. It's a space bar, and you have exactly what you wanted. Right. And now here, so we can do this. A couple of ways we can do this. We can type in C1, like we saw before, to put it in column one, followed by R1, right, to get that. That's pretty easy. Yep. We could also, we could, of course, do the opposite of that, um, R1, expand it, and then C1, and expand it. But we can sure. also do this, R1, C1, like that. Okay. And um, that's just all there. Yeah. yeah. Or we which is very do... similar to the original expansion, which was um, G2, X2, right, where you gave yes. the dimensions. Now you're kind of giving a, a, per, right. a sort of coordinate system to where you want the item to be. Right, exactly. And I want I should point out that that C1, R1 is reversible. So I could do C1, R1, where the C is first, like this. Nice. <laughs> right? Or I could do yeah. R1, C1. Either way, it doesn't matter. And, and yeah. it'll figure out, okay... You want to specify the the grid and the row and the column yeah. position. It, it doesn't matter what your mindset happens to be at that particular moment. Both make sense to Code Rush. Yeah. So that's an introduction into the XAML templates that ship with Code Rush. Thanks very much, Mark. Okay, so a quick review. Um, we've got a lot of templates that we can work with in XAML. Uh, if you want to look at those templates, there's the Code Rush Code Templates option, which will take you direct to the Templates Options page. Then you're going to want to select XAML language from the top, just in case you happen to be looking at another language. And what you'll see there is a list of all the templates that you can use. Of course, you can add your own to this if you feel the need. Uh, in addition to that, many of these templates take a kind of parameters. So obviously, we've seen um, controls that have a start and an end tag. That's the two tags. And uh, controls that are, in fact, just an individual tag. These parameters on the template naming variables, which is just the page above templates where you'll be if you use that option. And you can go and add your own items to these lists as well. So if you've got your own custom controls, you can enter these in with your own little shortcuts. Um, that'll work for both the, the one and the uh, pet <laughs> controls. And there's also a numeric list of properties that we can have here. Uh, we have height, margin, padding, and width. And you can add your own custom items to this list in case you have something special for your own controls. And um, Rory, I was, I'm sorry, Rory, I was just going to say, don't forget, if you're going to be on this page, the template name variables, make sure XAML is the language you select from the Very top. Very important, yes. So that you can see the pieces that we've created in here um, for you. Now, I haven't shown you all of the templates in XAML. There are others here that you can discover on your own. Um, among them are uh, binding properties right here for setting up uh, bindings for the templated mm -hmm. parent, the element name, uh, or to a particular dependency property, which you can do in those. When you see these question marks, that means there's a and a list over here that that fills in the other parts of this template. And that's okay, what, cool. and we used to call these dynamic templates. This is what's very cool is these templates um, multiply, right? As you add new elements to the list, you're getting new sure. templates um, for not only for this, but anything else that uses um, elements from this list, any other template that uses that. So, um, sure. So those are there, and um, also uh, I use these kind of frequently, the XK and the XN right here for uh, specifying the, the, uh, the name um, uh, or the key. So you can see what's happening here. We're generating keys and names in there. You can also use XS for X shared. That's sometimes helpful um, as well, and you may find others in here um, that uh, are, are examples of things you want to use, and of course you can add your own. Thanks very much, Mark. I mean, that's a whole bunch of templates that are going to make things a lot easier to work with XAML. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next week on Code Rush Feature of the Week. For more Feature of the Week videos, click one of the two video links on screen, or select from our playlist. Download and learn more about Code Rush from the DevExpress website. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest Code Rush feature videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.